Come on, guys. So this week, we are heading to St. George and we're going to check out the Mormon Temple and we're going to check out some parks. So, come along. Come along. All right, let's get going. Today we are visiting downtown St. George and one of the sites we wanted to see was the Mormon Temple which is behind us and unfortunately it's under construction. Um, normally you could walk on the grounds and, and check out the landscaping and such and the building but unfortunately today with the construction everything seems to be fenced off as it's a work zone. So we can't get too close to look at this but we can check it out from the distance. In the sun. <laughs> That's oh, what it will look like wow. finished. Are they building anything new or just kind of... So from here to here is the original temple. Okay. Uh -huh. There was an addition put on for elevators and stairs, but it was inadequate, so they've removed that and they'll double the size. And the architecture that's in this original back wall mm -hmm. will be in the new back wall as well. Okay. They're doing everything they can to be historical with it. Sure. Let me stop right here for a moment and introduce Elder Crane. He came out and offered to take our picture in front of the temple and then proceeded to tell us all about the renovation. Wow. And then this lower one story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. an annex we call it. Sure, sure. Uh, there was one, but again, it was smaller. There was some problems, so they've removed that, mm -hmm. building a new one. Oh. And it's in place there now. It's mm -hmm. not finished and so on, but it okay. is there. Wow. Isn't that beautiful though? It is yes, it beautiful. is. What is the material of the outside of the building? It was uh, red sandstone. Okay. And then they covered it with white plaster. Oh. To contrast with the red hills all around. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's always been white. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, in the, the temple was dedicated in 1877. And, uh, but the plaster started coming off and had some problems in the 1940s. Okay. So they removed all the plaster, stuccoed it, and now they paint that stucco and so on too. Mm. But it's been about eight years since it was uh, painted. Wow. Mm. So we believe that everybody must be baptized by immersion, mm -hmm. like Jesus was. And so this is the baptismal font in the temple. Oh, okay. Wow. So there's the font, and it rests on the backs of 12 oxen representing the 12 tribes of Israel and the strength of the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ to draw, to draw all mankind back unto God. Oh, wow. So when we leave the instruction room, we go through a veil symbolically entering into the presence of God. Uh -huh. So this represents the celestial kingdom as we celestial room, as we say it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, intended to reflect the peace, the beauty, the serenity of heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To it me, it's beautiful. enticing. It just draw, it wants is. to draw me in there and, and enjoy and protect. Right. Fun story. There was a family here from Denmark. And when the man saw it, he said, that looks just like the Queen's Palace. And I was there three weeks ago, he said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. So many people think there'd be a large open nave and so on like there is in cathedrals, etc. But it isn't. It's right. used it's, quite it's, differently. Yeah, it's smaller rooms with a purpose. Correct. Yeah. And you'd also be surprised, I think, to know that every temple, there's some 170 temples around the world. Okay. Another 70 or more announced and under construction. But they, every temple is always closed on Sundays. Mm. And this is a chapel or a meeting house. Right. And we worship in our chapels on Sunday. Okay. And there we worship with prayer 
mm -hmm. uh, hymns, um, uh, the sacrament. Right. Well, thank okay. you for spending time with us. Yeah, we really appreciate yeah. it. Well, I appreciate you spending <laughs> the time with me. Okay. <laughs> no, really it, do. You, you gave a lot. I mean, we wanted to see the building, but it, now you got, we got so much more out of it. We really appreciate yeah. that. Well, happy to do that. Thank okay. you so much. And I think it helps you to understand us a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your father. Yeah. And and stepmother and, mm -hmm. and so on. Just mm -hmm. uh, just so many ways. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You very Have much. a wonderful trip. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Zephyr, you blend in. Pioneer Park, which is located also in St. George, and it's a pretty neat park in that it is a climbing park, which is great for kids. Our dogs seem to like it. I mean, it's fun, it's a little strenuous, but it seems to be a great park and a very popular park. So if you are into climbing, they Or if you've got kids and you just want to tire them out. Right. Or dogs. Right. There are numerous, I guess, paths. giant boulders oh, right. with paths that you can walk along and climb on the boulders. And they're all different sizes and all different heights. And they give you a spectacular view of, well... St. George. St. George. Yep. So. Yeah, you can see the Mormon temple down there and lots of stuff. Yep. Right now, Zephyr has decided that she's tired, so she's taking a rest. So, we will finish our climb. Yep. Because I'm getting tired. <laughs> we'll, find, we'll climb our way back to the truck? <laughs> right. Okay. Sounds good. We'll do that. Okay. Our little adventure in the park didn't have such a great ending. As we got back to the parking lot, we found our truck had been broken into. They had smashed this window and this window on the truck. They tried to get in with this window first and couldn't and then smashed the back window and what did they take? I discovered and I in fact when I saw the broken window I knew right away what was taken. I, due to my carelessness I had left my purse in the truck but I felt since it was a busy park and a very busy parking lot that something like this nobody would attempt to do. And because of my mistake in my thinking, my purse was taken. And yes, unfortunately, there wasn't a lot in my purse, but what there was, was my wallet with all my, you know, my credit cards, my wallet, or my driver's license, my insurance cards, and a little bit of money, as well as my glasses were taken and my new cell phone and the keys to our truck right. a set of keys to our truck um, keys to the trailer yes. were also in your purse mm -hmm. I don't keep a, a lot in my purse but what was in there was the important stuff unfortunately yeah. thankfully we have iPhones and we are able to use find my phone and we actually just found her phone on the side of the expressway right behind me here so now i'm making the walk back to the truck but we've got a smashed window on the truck actually we got two smashed windows one totally gone the other ones they tried to break and it 
crack, but it didn't fully break, so we've got to get that fixed. We've got to go through the process of canceling all the credit cards, all that stuff. Oh well. Call the insurance company, put a claim in for everything. It's going to be quite a interesting turn of events. I was able to order a new driver's license. We did contact the credit cards that we knew for sure were in there and you know t took care of those accounts and ordered new credit cards we contacted our banks yep. and got those taken care of unfortunately there was you know the money that was in there which probably was their you know primary goal in taking the purse to see if there was money in there and um it wasn't a huge amount. Afterwards, when we thought about it, you know, with the keys in there for the truck, we felt very fortunate because, you know, had they taken the time to really think about it, they could have taken the entire truck. You know, in that respect, we were very fortunate. So, uh, yeah, we we're fortunate it wasn't much worse than it was, right, right? And we were able to get the windows replaced. Um, actually, the following Monday, it just happened on a Saturday, so the following Monday, our windows were we had an appointment to get the windows replaced. We're at Safe Light Auto Glass, and we're here to get this window replaced and this window replaced. But we're here at if I can get over the back of my you can see it there, Safe Light Auto glass replacement and they're going to replace the glass in the both windows for the truck and now we'll get everything back and secured so we can continue on our adventures. That was good. Um, insurance paid for it all because we have full glass coverage. We do have a little bit of paint damage to the vehicle that's some scratches that we will have to have looked at at a later date and see if we can get them fixed but that will probably come come out of pocket because of the deductible on our insurance and it's not worth turning in. When we contacted uh, the St. George police, because there was no injuries or anything like that, they just said to file a report online. Yeah, yeah, they don't send an officer unless there's um, an injury or some particular reason to do so. All right. So having gone through this experience, we have learned a few things that we are going to do differently. One of them is we're gonna carry a lot less in our wallets you know as far as credit cards and such we're only going to carry the cards that we really use and in our case that's probably two cards mm -hmm. um, we had more than that we've pulled those cards out of our wallet because we're not using them and we don't need them and so we're keeping them in a safe place we've also have decided that one of the things that would help going in the future if this happens again would be to keep a kind of an inventory of what you have in your wallet what credit cards you have you know and maybe the phone numbers for the credit card company so that you can contact them quicker and easier when this happens you don't have to figure that out because if it got into a situation that maybe both our wallets were gone you know then we wouldn't have access to another set of cards with the phone numbers on it so that's another thing that we want to do don't carry anything in your wallet that you don't need to and i can't stress that more because one of the things that diane had in her purse was our checkbook and with a full bunch of checks. So that required us to now have to go cancel that checking account, open a new checking account with a new number, and make sure that you know everything was closed out, and we had to make sure that you know checks that we had written, um, we had to contact people and say, don't cash that check, we'll send you a new one because we're closing that account. Like Randy said, you have to contact the places that you have direct deposit from, you have to, if you have automatic payments set up through bill pay or, you know, whatever your particular financial institution yeah. offers. So it was a big learning experience for us as well. And, you know, for anyone that travels uh, quite a bit as we do in a trailer, um, you know, something like this is you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, it, it, it's going to happen, you know, even if you don't travel in a trailer. But, you know, right. if you're going places, you know, your vehicle could be broken into. 
things that we could do to prevent that, one of the things, one of the first things is don't leave anything like a purse that is quick access for somebody to grab invisible area. We could have easily hid it in the back underneath a, a blanket or something that we have on the floor for the dogs. No one would ever have seen it. Cut the visibility into your vehicle a little bit more. Unfortunately, New York State does not allow tinted windows, and that's why we don't have these windows tinted, but that would be another thing that you could do if you can, tint the windows um, on your vehicle. Alarm systems. The truck has an alarm system from the factory. We know it works because the dog set it off all the time. We didn't hear it going off, so I don't know why that didn't happen. Um, and your alarm system, you're only relying on that scaring away the person. If it did go off, you know, how many times do you hear an alarm system in a parking lot and you just walk by it? So from that perspective, I don't know if it, there's any value to that or upgrading any type of alarm system. One thing we did add is a camera system though. We've been wanting to add a dash cam to record our drives, you know, in case something happened as far as an accident or whatever. So what we did is we actually bought a professional dash cam that has an interior camera that records the inside of the vehicle and that camera will turn on automatically if someone makes a noise or bangs on the vehicle or anything like that so and we've also added decals on here saying warning you will, you are being recorded in this vehicle so hopefully that's a deterrent from somebody if they see that decal before they try to break in they're going to realize oh there's a camera in there i'm going to be recorded you know they're going to see my picture maybe they won't do it I don't know if much else that you can do besides that. Um, I guess prepare yourself that it may happen and you know, do take the precautions to make sure you have all your information documented so that if it does happen to you, you can transition and get yourself back going in a reasonable amount of time. Right. Yep. In today's world, you can't be too careful, I don't think. Right. So right. unfortunately, we learned it the hard way. Hopefully you've learned something from our mistakes and if this has ever happened to you or if you have any suggestions we'd love you to leave a comment below so that other people can learn too. Um, if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up and hit the bell for notifications that way you will be notified when we post new vid videos on a weekly basis and until the next time we will see you down the road. Take care everybody. Bye. Bye.